Uh, now at five, the governor's stay-at-home order is going to be in effect longer. The extension announced today, plus hopeful news for Hoosiers unemployed due to the virus. A 37-year-old man died from COVID-19, and now his wife wants you to hear what she has to say. I'm Kara Kenny with her message. Somebody could literally be sitting in their house right now, uh, not a Bowen employee. They could apply for a job. They could get screened, hired, interviewed, all of that. RTV6 is connecting Hoosiers with job opportunities. The company looking to fill 100 positions right now. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. And good evening to you at 5 o'clock. I'm Mark Mullins. Amanda is off tonight. Right now at 5, Governor Eric Holcomb announced today that on Monday, he will officially extend the state's stay-at-home order to Friday, May 1st. This will now mirror the order in effect for the city of Indianapolis. The stay-at-home order was due to expire on Monday. In announcing the extension during his regular coronavirus news conference, he also said the order will likely change after May 1st, though it won't be going away completely after that. Holcomb said it may include things like reduced restrictions for non-COVID elective surgeries, but there is still another two weeks before we know about those changes. There is a lot of work that needs to be done between now and May 1st, between now and April 22nd, and then May 1st, and then there will be after that uh, as well. But this is going to allow us to make sure that we're all on the same page as a state in this together, one Indiana. We also heard good news from that briefing for Hoosiers who have lost their jobs due to COVID-19 and are waiting for the $600 a week from the Federal CARES Act. The Commissioner of Department of Workforce Development says the first checks went out today and $200 million more will go out on Monday. Now for the more sobering numbers here. The State Health Department today reported that more 42 more Hoosiers have died from COVID-19 for a total of 519. 642 more people have tested positive for the virus. Right now, more than 10,000 Hoosiers are in that category. Nearly 55,000 people have been tested. The state continues to give us information about the ages of the victims as well. Nearly 90% of those who have died are age 60 and older. No deaths in people from birth to 29, but there are positive cases in all age ranges. The gap is closing a bit regarding deaths in men versus women. Men are still dying at a higher rate, 57% to 40%, but women are testing positive at a higher rate than men, 54% to 44% there. And now for the larger picture. There are more than 2.2 million cases around the world with more than 151,000 deaths. We're closing in on 35,000 of them in the US. More than 58,000 people in this country have recovered. A Pendleton woman wants you to stay home. That's her message after losing her husband this month to COVID-19. Lou Berry was only 37 years old. And tonight, his wife wants you to know that this disease isn't impacting only the sick and elderly. She shared her story with RTV6's Kara Kenny. When Lou Berry came here to IU Health North with a fever and a cough, his family and his wife were sure that he would survive. Instead, he became one of hundreds of Hoosiers to die from COVID-19. Lou and Brianna Berry met in 2016 and got married in 2018. The Pendleton couple had hopes and dreams. He was a very honorable man and he was so giving and kind hearted. They both had asthma and took a lot of precautions amid COVID-19, but Brianna says Lou got sick anyway and developed a cough. He had a fever of 105, so that's when I took him to the hospital. Brianna says she expected her husband to survive. He was strong, a former HSC lineman. Lou was overweight and had asthma, but was otherwise healthy. Despite doctors' best efforts, Lou died at the age of 37. The last time she talked to him was on FaceTime before Lou was put on a ventilator. He told me that I was the best thing that ever happened to him and that the years, even though they were short with me, were the happiest of his life. She wants others to know this impacts young people. It is not just the old or the frail or the sick. He was always such a strong person and persevered and overcame so many things in his life. And Brianna believes it's way too soon to talk about lifting the stay at home order. And I think that would be a grave decision. I think that if that happens, 
a lot of people are going to die. And I am terrified for my own family. Brianna isn't sure where her husband got COVID-19, but says she's been self-isolating as a precaution. A widow at age 31, she's urging everyone to stay home. I just want people to stop thinking that this is not real because I don't want to lose anyone else I love. IU Health could not release any information about Barry because of privacy laws, but they told us in a statement that the loss of life related to COVID-19 is tragic. Reporting in Carmel, Kara Kenny, RTV6. A sad story to hear there, Kara. Thank you. IU Health is offering virtual screenings, which will allow a nurse to talk to you about your symptoms. It's recommended you explore an option like this before heading to your doctor or emergency room. IU Health is starting to test patients who have symptoms but aren't necessarily sick enough to be admitted to the hospital. They've set up specimen collection sites for patients who have received referrals through those virtual visits. RTV6 is working to help thousands of Hoosiers who don't have a job right now due to the coronavirus pandemic. The state's largest community mental health center has about 100 open positions. Through our Hiring Hoosiers initiative, RTV6's Nicole Griffin is finding out why there is an even larger demand for their services right now. Don't feel like you have to do this on your own. These are really kind of scary and anxiety provoking times. We are here for you. It's times like these that people often reach out for help. They may be feeling stressed or having feelings of depression. The Bowen Center is taking calls from patients daily. The center serves 27 counties and has 10 buildings across central and northern Indiana. During the pandemic, the demand for their services has not slowed down. They've moved all their patient services remotely and need to hire for around 100 positions, specifically skills coaches. So oftentimes these involve coping skills, decision making skills, uh, emotion regulation skills, uh, parenting skills and strategies. Leaders say being a skills coach is a good way for a college graduate with a bachelor's degree to start their career. Just being able to help someone relax um, from the stress, being able to do breathing exercises. Um, it could be helping them to engage with their children. Um, they're home now with their children. Um, daycares are closed, schools are closed. Because of the current restrictions right now due to COVID-19, applicants can complete the entire interview process from their home. All they need is a phone or a laptop. I mean, somebody could literally be sitting in their house right now, um, not a Bowen employee. They could apply for a job. They could get um, screened, hired, interviewed, all of that. They're also looking to hire nurses, therapists, and IT technicians. Working for you, Nicole Griffin. RTV6. And right now, with the remote virtual services being offered, Bowen Center is reaching even more patients. They say it helps to remove barriers like transportation and lack of time. We have information on how you can apply at hiringhoosiers.com. Now, more job opportunities. Direct Connect Logistics is hiring and expanding its downtown Indianapolis headquarters on Michigan Street. The company specializes in providing nationwide transportation and logistics services. It plans to hire up to 20 sales specialists. New employees are slated to begin work in mid-May. Base salaries begin at $36,000 plus commission. Information on how to apply is at HiringHoosiers.com. The Bureau of Motor Vehicles is working to get more truckers on the road to deliver critical supplies and to be available for the start of the agricultural season in our state. The BMV is opening three more branches around the state by appointment only to process new commercial learner's permits, new CDL or commercial driver's licenses, and upgrade or downgrade the CDL to add the tank vehicle or hazardous materials endorsement. Indianapolis West on Crawfordsville Road is already open for this service. Starting Monday, the Beach Grove and Carmel branches will also be open for those specific appointments. To schedule one, call the number on your screen there. It's 888-692-6841. It's graduation day for 142 pharmacy students at Purdue, and they can head right into the workforce. They're graduating about a month early to help pharmacies during the COVID-19 pandemic. The early graduates can temporarily work under a full license to practice in Indiana following an executive order signed Wednesday by Governor Holcomb. Initially, they were only going to work as graduate pharmacists. Graduates who apply will get a temporary 90-day full license to practice. They still have to take their license exam, but they can practice 
right away. HiringHoosiers.com is your source for all kinds of employment information. You'll find more companies that are hiring right now, support for small business, plus information about unemployment benefits. Local food banks are seeing a need like never before. Gleaners broke a record yesterday with the number of families coming to its meal distribution site. It is one of the organizations receiving financial help from the Central Indiana COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund. RTV6 is committed to showing you how your donations to the fund are now making a difference. Our Megan Sanctorum found out today Gleaners still needs help to keep up with demand. Here at Gleaners Food Bank in Indianapolis, there have been a lot of changes due to COVID-19. They've switched to a drive-through model, temporarily suspended volunteers for safety reasons, and they're working to keep up with a much higher demand. We saw lines form pretty quickly. Uh, the last three weeks, I just saw a count and we're up a little over 72%. He says this pandemic has caused a need they've never seen before. It had been trending about 400 households per distribution day. Yesterday we did over 2,100. And that comes with a hefty price tag. Last week and this week spent about 600,000 above and beyond our normal budget just to cope with COVID. And it looks like it'll sustain at that level for quite a while. They just released this video asking for support. And even though they've had some high profile donations and this economic relief fund, the need for help is still there. When you're spending $600,000 a week extra, you need every donor and you need every dollar. Because the one thing that won't change is the dedication to feeding families in need for weeks and months to come. Even when what I call the medical recovery has occurred, and the virus, the medical impacts of the virus are past us as a community, the economic impact for the families that have been struggling will not be. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. Well, RTV6 is proud to be working together with the United Way of Central Indiana to get the word out about the relief fund that's helping Gleaners and so many other organizations. You can donate to the fund by texting HELP2020 to 91999, and we'll continue to bring you stories that show how your donations are truly making a difference. Still ahead here on RTV6 News at 5, it appears people are not social distancing as they should. New restrictions going into effect to reduce crowds at Indy Parks. With more people concerned about their health due to COVID-19, it's the new way that food is being delivered. I'm Rafael Sanchez. That's story next on RTV6. And rain and drizzle finally moving out of the state. I'll show you what's moving in for the weekend. I think you'll like that a lot more. To Keller. Keller and Keller. We're Open Indy is RTV6's effort to highlight businesses open and working their way through this tough economy. A Northside carryout deli is open and wants to stay that way long after COVID-19. The owner turned to a young man for a way to provide deliveries in a safe and healthy way. Only on RTV6, Rafael Sanchez is telling us to look up as drone delivery is coming to your doorstep. At Griner's Deli, they're grilling outdoors. We fill this whole grill up. The business wanting to make sure customers know they're open at a time many small businesses are struggling to survive. We've gone down to probably about 15% of our original business that we have. With the dining room being closed, it's just killed everything. The owner of the deli on 86th Street is also looking for ways to keep his people on the payroll in an effort to keep workers and customers safe while practicing social distancing. The business has deployed drones to make contact-free deliveries. Once the order is driven to a home or a business, the drone operator, who is FAA licensed, drops off the food from several feet away. The drone you see there can deliver a meal weighing up to three pounds. You hook it on, no drinks for now. The service is free. People are really protective of their health, and we are too, and we don't want to come in contact, but we still want to serve them. We still want to feed them because they're stepping out and doing their work, and so we want to do our work. We've got uh, buildings over here. We've got apartment complexes, big houses that we deliver to, all these businesses around that we deliver to. It's the thing of the future. In the past two weeks, the drones have made seven deliveries. It's made people smile. It's kept employees 
engaged. And it's a reminder that while the situation in our country is up in the air, the future is just around the corner, ready to deliver. Raphael, thank you for that. The drone pilot, Tegan Tinsley, says all deliveries are done by the line of sight and the drones don't go anywhere above 400 feet. There are three Griner's locations in Indianapolis, but the Nora restaurant is the only one using the drone. That location is open for takeout until 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday. We have more information about the Shelby Street and Pyramids locations in this story on the IndyChannel.com. More Big Woods restaurant locations open today for carry out. Big Woods Franklin and Big Woods Bloomington are now open every day from 4 to 9 for carry out. The menu is limited to just the most popular items, but will also include appetizers and beverage op options like make it home cocktails and growlers. Big Woods restaurants in Speedway, Hazeldale and Big Woods Pizza in Nashville are also open for carry out. Those three locations are operating under regular hours. RTV6 and the Indy Chamber of Commerce have joined forces to protect Indiana businesses. You can find more about the Chamber's Buy Indy effort and profiles on businesses that are open by going to the IndyChannel.com slash open. Indy Parks is rolling out new restrictions because of overcrowding in parks and to help slop, stop the slu, excuse me stop the spread of coronavirus. So starting tomorrow, the city is closing its four dog parks. That means Broad Ripple Bark Park, Paul Ruster Dog Park, Smock Dog Park, and the Canine Companion Zone at Eagle Creek Park will close until further notice. And speaking of Eagle Creek Park, new restrictions for the whole park are going in there as well. Starting tomorrow, the park will no longer allow vehicle traffic to decrease crowds and excessive traffic. Last weekend alone, between 3,000 and 5,000 people visited Eagle Creek Park. Pedestrians and cyclists will still be allowed. Barricades and closed signs will notify people of this change. Several park gates will also be locked. Now to your Storm Team 6 forecast and certainly a cold, wet, and dreary day to end the work week. Is the weekend looking any better, Kevin? I think that's what a lot of people want to know tonight. It's looking, it'll feel better and it will look better. Brighter is the word for your Saturday. Hello, Mark, and hello to everybody at home. Welcome to the Gregory household. I'm in the basement right now. Let's talk about quarter of an inch or less. That's how much rain we had today. Some of you to the north had some snow mixing in slowly. This is all starting to move off to the east and we'll start talking about a different pattern that will develop as we go through the next 24 to 36 hours. There's the back edge of the showers, Bloomington to the east side of Indy up to Muncie. It will take a while though for the drizzle to finally come to an end. Temperature in Lafayette's 42, it's 50 in Bedford. The colder air will settle in and I think temperatures will drop a little more quickly once the clouds clear. Say hello to Hamilton. Liz Tatum sent in this picture of all the toys that Hamilton is surrounded by. I like the big donut with sprinkles on there. I bet if I grabbed that, he would uh, chase that as long as uh, I would keep throwing it. He'd bring it right back. Thanks, Hamilton. Have a good evening. The drizzle ends as you go through 8 to 11 tonight. You begin to see the skies clearing in the western half of the state. And that sets the stage for one more night of temperatures at freezing or below. All indications are that's something we erase from the forecast for next week. No frost or freeze in the forecast. Temperatures in the upper 50s on Sunday, that chance for rain 30%. And I think it will be light rain and more likely at night. Look at how bright it'll be tomorrow. That sunshine will feel great and it won't be that windy. Maybe 10 to 15 mile per hour winds at times, but by our recent standards, that's fairly light. Temperatures consistently from lower 50s to middle 50s. That's a nice recovery from temperatures in the lower 30s and upper 20s. Sunday, more in the way of clouds. That slight chance of showers, especially late in the day. As you look at the seven-day forecast, if you're looking for a little more consistent warmth, it appears. And we've also got a mini dry stretch Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, three in a row where temperatures uh, we'll be close to average, if not a little above average. Our next best chance of rain returning comes next week, Thursday and Friday, maybe in some spring-like thunderstorms and 71 a week from today. All right, Kevin, thanks for the update there. Working together to feed those who need a little support. The effort underway to pack 10,000 boxes and the deadline volunteers are trying to beat. Next, here on RTV6. Ashley Home Store. This is home. 
Hoosiers are working together, helping ease fears for families who are concerned about putting food on the table, all because of the COVID-19 outbreak and its financial ripple effects. Today, the Salvation Army and Midwest Food Bank teamed up at Lucas Oil Stadium to prepare family food boxes for families in need. Each box contains enough food to feed a family of four for up to five days. The Salvation Army says its goal is to fill 10,000 family food boxes by the beginning of next week. There is a, a huge increase uh, in the demand for food all across the state. So this is our way of sort of stepping into that and helping sort of ease that demand to a certain degree. Volunteers from the Indiana National Guard, Indiana Civil Air Patrol, and Williams Comfort Air also pitched in to help. They hope to fill 4,000 boxes today with a total goal of 10,000 next week. All new at 6 p.m. here, suspended nurses who have served the entirety of their punishment now cannot get reinstated. How COVID-19 is holding them back, the virus which they could help defeat if they were at